This is the Conso 226 Industrial Walking Foot Sewing Machine. I've just got it on my test bench right now. I've cleaned up the hook area. Here we can see it's the 226 made in Japan. I believe it uses the, let's see here, 135 by 17 needle. It's got the walking foot right there, as you can see. I'm going to focus in. It's got the horizontal hook and bobbin in there. And I've already uh, cleaned out this area, made a few adjustments, and it's sewing marine vinyl perfectly fine. But what we got to do today is get this on a table with a motor. We're out in the garage. This is the table that came with the. Uh, Conso 226 when I bought it um, Pretty simple setup. I really like these clutch motors if they are running at the 1725 rpm, it's a little bit slower motor some of them have a 3450 rpm motor That's too fast as far as I'm concerned for industrial walking foot It does have a little bit bigger pulley here on it. It's a 75 millimeter I think that's going to be okay. I did uh, open up the clutch motor, clean it, uh, cleaned off the clutch assembly, so it should, you know, I'll adjust it to come on nice and easy, so it shouldn't get crazy when you take off sewing with it. I've got some more items on the bench here. I've got to put back together this knee lift assembly, get that lined up. And I have to go down to the shed and get a few other things. Okay, well, we're in Minnesota, so got a little snow to put up with. Christmas is over, but we got a little bit of snow the other day. And what we need down here is a couple of parts. I've got a trifecta of 201s here lined up waiting to get looked at but for today what we're going to need is probably a drip pan some linkages and a bobbin winder and we'll probably go with this guy here and i'll just take all the rest of this stuff up to the garage get it warmed up and get things going I've got everything sorted out, brought the machine up into the garage and set it on the table. I've got the, uh, this is the bobbin winder I'm going to go with. The thread stand, it's only got an arm there for one thread, but that'll be fine. And we're going to use this drip pan. This is the one that came with it. This knee lift mechanism, and then I did have to find a different linkage for the foot pedal below we'll have to make a few changes to that I just don't like the way this angle on this piece uh, is working out I like to have this back a little bit like this so if you're wondering why it's taken me a while to, I bought this uh, machine in the summertime and basically just took it apart painted a few things and then put them in storage in the shed so I kind of have to revisit my memory bank here to see what goes where. So I am going to go to the other shed, find a belt for this, and start putting things back together. I've got the linkage assembly on uh, to the bottom of the clutch motor. I like the pedal to tip back a little bit like this. And um, every motor should have a plate on it. That will tell you, you know, the brand and the RPMs that it runs at and the horsepower. And some of them, actually this arm that comes down here, see if I can get this to focus, um, will tip forward and backward, get it a little brighter. Uh, on this one, it doesn't do that, but I'm happy with the way it's working. I adjusted the spring so that when you depress the pedal, it, it'll pull it back up pretty nicely and because uh, actually when this is in the up position there's a brake built into here that's going to stop this pulley 
So basically when you're at this position, the brake is on, as you slowly come down, you're kind of in a neutral position so you can turn the hand wheel on the machine freely. And then as you go press down harder and harder, you're going to press a steel plate against a, a cork pad and that's gonna engage the sewing machine and make it spin. The harder you push down, the faster it's gonna go. And uh, yeah, once you learn to control that, you should be able to run the machine slowly and if you're having a trouble with that, you can always put a smaller pulley on there and uh, get a different length of belt, a longer one, obviously. All right, I'm going to continue on and show you what I get done next here. Well, I ran down to the shed and just grabbed a handful of belts because I have no idea which one it's going to take, and I'll start digging through those and figure it out. I've got the uh, bobbin winder installed on the machine. And I'll just show you quickly how you thread it. I've just got a, uh, let's see if we can focus on that. It's a Tech 69 thread. It's a not a very heavy thread, but it, it's really strong. It's hard to break it. And you just come down, come off the cone, go through the top because it has to pull the thread off the top of the cone. You come down through this little hole back here between these tension discs, run it this way. There is a hole in this bobbin, so I just ran it through the hole. And then you just flip this little lever ahead like this to engage it onto the belt of the machine. I've already wound this a little bit here. I want to keep that tight. And then make sure you have the foot of the machine up because everything's going to turn when you wind the bobbin on these industrial machines. Let me get my foot in here. I like to make sure I keep that thread tight. See, as you can see, everything turns. And then I'll just go ahead and snip this little piece of thread off. You want to make sure you have enough tension on your thread that you get it wound nicely on the bobbin there. I don't like to overfill the bobbin because when you put it in the bobbin case in the machine there, if it's overwound here, it could slip off the side, get underneath, and make a mess. I've got the bobbin wound and I dropped it in the machine. I have to hold the, my phone camera with one hand so the thread is wound on this bobbin in this direction, okay? So when you set the, I'm trying not to block the light, when you set the bobbin in the bobbin case, you get the thread coming around, go through this little slot right here, and just pull on it a little bit. You can see the bobbin's going counterclockwise. Okay, now I'm going to drop down this little lever and, and shut this door, not quite all the way. And then when you go ahead and, because uh, that thread has to catch, the needle has to catch that, Hopefully there's enough tension on this. No, there wasn't. I have to get a I have to get something in here. Alright, let's see if this does the trick. I should be able to watch that thread. Okay, let's see if we caught that. Come on out of there. Nope, I made a mess. Hang on. Well, I made a mess of it the first time around. So I have to go ahead and pull the thread up and not film that part. But as you can see, you need the thread from the bob bobbin case down there coming through the hole on the feed dog. And the other thread going through your your foot on the top. All right, this thing is ready to sew. 
I still have a little more work to do. I need to finish up with the drip pan and I need to get the knee lift assembly position on there the right way and then I can do a demonstration of the machine working. All right, what we're looking at here is when I was pulling the thread through the machine, I could feel some tension on the, it wasn't going smooth, smoothly through the upper tension. And this machine sat for a while in a guy's garage. So there was some rust on this. So here I've gone ahead and cleaned this one up. Uh, just take it on a little buffing wheel here, abrasive wheel, and go all the way around and get this smooth again so that when you pull the thread through it's not like it'll hit a smooth spot and then the rust and then it won't pull through quite as smoothly i'm gonna get that cleaned up and put back together i've got the knee lift installed on the bottom of the table took a little of adjusting a lot of people i don't know why they don't use these so they don't have them adjusted properly i've got it set up for me right now depending on what size you are taller shorter you might have to change it a little bit sorry about that i'm trying to scooch ahead here with the chair and i'm going to do a demonstration of this running and if i can run it with snow boots on you should be able to run it without a problem so i've got three layers of uh, vinyl material here i don't think this is marine vinyl vinyl i think it's just a uh, upholstery vinyl machine runs pretty quiet and now I got to try to hold I'm gonna just bury the needle and then I'll go from there cuz I'm gonna have to hold the camera while I'm sewing I've got this set on about uh, let me grab the threads it's about seven stitches per inch and look, I'm wearing snow boots and I can run it this slow with a clutch motor and I don't have my hand on the hand wheel or I could probably slow it down even more. Okay, I'm gonna bury the needle here. Let it come up just a little bit and then I can use my knee to lift the presser feet and turn this work. You can see the stitches on the top right there and on the bottom right there. Setting the stitch really nice. Cleaning up these uh, Earlier I talked about I cleaned up these discs right here and I'm getting a message so I have to get rid of that. Okay. Right here I cleaned these up. This thread is running through there pretty smoothly now and it's easier to adjust the upper tension and keep it even. So let's uh, add a couple more layers of marine vinyl. Alright, now we'll get, we have it up to five layers and let's see what we can do. I'm going to try to run it a little faster just so it climbs up over this. I'm out in the garage and the machine isn't on the most level part of the floor so it's wiggling around a little bit but I think you get the idea. And for anybody that's got this machine, I'll just show you quickly how I thread it. I come down off of the, uh, the cone, go through this post right in the top here. Then I come down, swirl around this, because this starts to add tension before you even get to this upper tensioner. That way you can get a little tension on it without having to really screw this in super hard. Come down around here, you got to catch this take up spring, go through this little clip here, and then you go up behind that guide up through your take up lever, back down, and when you get down to the needle, you go from the left to the right, because that I showed you earlier the hook is over here spinning. So you have to have that scarf of your hook on this side or it's not going to pick up the thread. All right, let's take a look at the back of that. I've got, the reason I'm doing this demonstration is this machine will be coming up for sale on Facebook Marketplace. So I thought I'd make this video just to show it working. All right, thanks for watching. Console 266, made in Japan. I forgot to mention this sewing machine does have reverse and 
I'll show you what it'll do. I put on the biggest, longest stitch. A lot of people will do this and say the machine works, but they won't have any thread in it. They'll just be running the needle back and forth. Let's see what we got. That's the front side. And there's the back side. Alright, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button. That helps out the channel. Subscribe if you want to see more crazy sewing machine antics. Thanks for watching.